Grateful you stay there for us. We're back. The newspapers are ready. The Ghanaian Times, the BNFT, the Daily Graphic, and the Daily Guide. Uh, the drone story is well too known uh, for me to do a recount, but this is how they put it. The Times says that drone delivery service takes off. Uh, the BNFT says VIP launches Zipline's drone services. Uh, the Daily Graphic says first drone center opens flying essential medical supplies. Uh, Daily Guide, however, does not uh, take that as the big one. Uh, it stays on the uh, Takradi girls, confusion over missing Takradi girls. That's how Daily Guide put it. VIP launches medical drone delivery service. It's on uh, corner of a page, and the finder says Dr. Boimia launches Ghana's drone delivery service. My guest to do the talking is the aspiring member of parliament for the Tamale Central Constituency of the NDC. Uh, Comrade Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed is here. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing great. Inshallah, we are managing. Everybody in Ghana manages except my brother <laughs> and his <I> <laughs> friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, Rukchub is a member of the NPP, Steve. He's here. He's the one that uh, Comrade Mutala is referring to. Good morning, too. <laughs> Good morning, too. Good morning, right. you, you are not managing? Is that no, one? No. Uh, well, I, I, everybody. I mean, well, I, I think that um, we all have to be grateful yeah. to. The most high. No, but for same being we are not. hell and hearty this morning. Right. And I'm mean, look at look at Mutala. Isn't it looking yeah, he, he much looks, better than healthy, yeah, very, very. when he well, was one, even one, one, a deputy minister and well, then, the were you propaganda secretary? It's an, it's I keep an, saying it's that. No, you weren't. When, you, when yeah, you are eating junk, you don't have money to eat good. You eat junk. You bloat. Everybody <laughs> in Ghana eats junk these days, except me. <laughs> I see. Okay. So, I mean, he, right. he would do, for, I mean, for someone who is suffering, he's actually uh, clamoring to become a member of parliament to liberate, in, to liberate in Tamale people. Central and mm. all of this with all the resources. Look at his shoes. I see. Oh, to, okay. To, to liberate, <laughs> okay. To liberate let's people. move on. So <laughs> let's take a look at how the drone will impact Garnet Health uh, Service. It's a story well too known. Uh, it started and yesterday was launched. Um, the first uh, after some successful tests uh, were done. So yesterday it was launched and the first center was inaugurated. Blood and other essential medicines and vaccines will be distributed to and by unmanned aerial vehicles, drones. I mean, if you like, if I, you can refer to them as uh, s uh, small aeroplanes or helicopters, or if the drone will confuse you. So that's the news. The good news is that uh, hard to reach areas. You can see the one on your screen. Hard to reach areas. Uh, would be able to get direct uh, supplies from these uh, uh, small aeroplanes or uh, helicopters to enable them attend to patients. But exactly how does it impact on our health uh, sector? Uh, let's start the conversation. Eric, you, let me start with you. Is, is this a, a, a complete um, answer to the challenge that we have in our health service? Well, uh, good morning mm. once again. Good morning to uh, my honorable friend here. Uh, and then, of course, good morning to the viewers mm. out there. Of, if you'd say that it would be um, a total solution to uh, our health care delivery system, I would say definitely not. But does it add up to uh, an existing um, infrastructure? Yes, it does. And if you, um, you have taken your time to really appreciate exactly what the drones are going to do, mm. you would appreciate the fact that it actually extends the last mile and is able to, uh, in record time, deliver medicines, essential medicines and blood to uh, pre-vetted centers who have actually been trained already to be able to assess these um, uh, drugs and then uh, also uh, essential uh, medicines and the, the blood. And you see, because of the kind of uh, terrain that we have even in this country, some places are extremely remote mm. where uh, it's almost impossible to go through those places using existing uh, transportation systems that we have. So this is essentially just going to add up. It's meant to 
uh, adapt to the existing delivery system that we have. And what makes this, uh, for me, I think that uh, innovative as well is the fact that once you have all these centers, distribution centers, what it does is that this whole idea that you would have one facility somewhere having enough supplies and the other doesn't would, would be a thing of the past. Mm. And then also, they are building state-of-the-art storage facilities. What it means is that in some parts of the country, even when you have issues to do with the storage itself and things and blood, if they have a challenge with that, then these facilities will do the same. Again, like you know, because the drones are I mean, we've done a bit of science, so it flies actually in a straight line. So what it means is that uh, the distances that it actually covers are actually longer than uh, we would perceive using if driving, normal if you're driving on the roads and all of those things. I've had people come up with um, some kind of, uh, um, I mean, disagreement with the fact that maybe it's not priority and we should have used the money for something else. Those are justified. Um, contributions. But my point is that even if you're able to save one life by virtue of the fact that there's a snake by somewhere, up and off somewhere, or in a front place somewhere, using this technology, that in itself makes it an optimal utilization of our resources. Because in the final life, even when there's something like an accident and all that, we know that people lose their life by virtue of the fact that there's no real-time assistance available to them. Now, I've heard the commentary that, well, there are no professionals or healthcare professionals who actually administer this thing. And it's also because people have not taken their time to understand exactly what it is. You don't just wake up and send blood to a center. The, the center that the blood is going to would actually activate the process, mm. would actually request that. We need an anti-snake serum or we need uh, blood we need this particular essential medicine it, through an SMS system. Mm. So this whole idea that uh, there will not be people there to administer, it, it's almost, it, it's erroneous. But was, so some of the things, the red herrings that were being thrown in to create a certain impression that it's not well thought through and everything, you understand? Because it's like having a mobile phone doing any of the transactions that you, you can do. If you do not activate it, they medicines will not come, you will not activate the whole process. And all of these professionals have been trained adequately to do so. I know that four centers are going to be uh, uh, situated a across the country to be able to uh, cater for the entire stretch of this country. Of course, we would have to, government has to make sure that the other things that you make uh, healthcare delivery in this country uh, up to par with the best in the world should happen. If people say that we should focus on uh, training, capacity, uh, resourcing the various hospitals and health facilities that we do, those are legitimate things. Mm. But this drone thing, for me, is also an innovation. It's something that extends the uh, delivery system to areas which hitherto you know, would not have had an opportunity to get that. Apart from that, the speed. Because when it comes to issues to do with healthcare, mm. the, 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 the speed with which you're able to administer some kind of uh, uh, service. service is also key in with, with either people losing their lives or actually going into something which is more serious than would have happened over the period. So for me, it is a step in the right direction. I heard the vice president and even the health minister saying that as we speak today, it's probably the most uh, state-of-the-art system anywhere in the world because, of course, when it comes to technology, technology is dynamic and it keeps uh, improving and all of those things. So it's something that we can all be proud of. People have made certain uh, commentary based on cost and everything. And also, that is misguided. Because if you go through the service level agreement, agreement that was sent to Parliament, even for that amount of money, which is essentially the best 
case scenario, but what we in economics we call all things being equal. We are getting the best for our, our money. That's you understand? Okay. Yeah, so all, being, all things being equal, all of these facilities are up and running. They are able to deliver a certain number of essential medicine and blood in, in, a, in, a, in a particular day, within a month, and all of those things. Even if you get to that point, there's a certain discount that has been uh, captured in there. So really, but I feel that we need to give it uh, a chance to work. I mean, of course, once it's a, it's, it's, it's a new system, we'll be able to monitor. monitoring it and improving on the okay. services that they... But I'm happy as well that a lot of young people, Ghanaians, are going to have an opportunity to work for a world-class organization like that and be able to, one, transfer the knowledge and be able to even go to... I, I saw um, a situation where Senegal had actually visited the Ghanaian site, the, the, uh, the one near Suhum, to also look at the possibility of taking it into uh, Senegal. And we are going to use Ghanaian young people to be able to go into other countries to actually train other young people. Employment that is going to create the sort of bars and the local economy within the areas that this is going to uh, generate. For me, I think it's something that we need to okay. be happy Eric, about. I'm grateful. Yeah. Uh, Comrade, so he raises this issue, of course, he says, well, is uh, uh, worth uh, how much we're paying, uh, it said it's a priority. Uh, he thinks that it's, it's good for uh, enhancing our health service. What do you think? Yeah, well, Brad, let me say good morning to you and my good friend and a brother and also the good people of Tamale, and more specifically Tamale Central. Permit me to also use this opportunity to remind the people of Tamale that the boot for boot walk that <laughs> is going to be taking place in Tamale mm. Central, you know, on Saturday, inshallah, is coming on, and inshallah will be there. So it is not only limited to the people of Tamale Central, you know, all well-meaning Ghanaians. I will be happy to see my brother there because <laughs> it's the clearest demonstration of the disillusionment of even the very people who indeed were deceived into thinking that the MPP was going to do anything better. But they've realized that it's a complete disappointment. I think that the issue at hand is not about whether indeed delivering medical services for people who so need it is good or bad. That is not the no. issue. The issue has to do with weighing between spending that much money and executing a project like that. Is it worth it as compared to other pressing needs within the medical sector? Let us also be reminded that we got, if you like, the inspiration, because the MPP seems to be having a lot of inspirations. Sometimes it seems to be hallucinating the kind of inspirations. They have to do this because Rwanda did that. Let's compare the two countries. Mm. In terms Ru of the cost. Rwanda is a mountainous country. They have a lot of hills. There are lots of places that one cannot access. We have more decent and efficient road network than Rwanda. Forget of Kigali. That is a fact. And two, they experience more rains than we do. So it is extremely difficult to gain access to certain places in Rwanda than you would. Rwanda has about less than 40% of their roads that are tired. In fact, many parts of Rwanda cannot be accessed. So for you to say that because Rwanda indeed implemented something like that, we ought to implement that for me, is bankers. So you cannot just say that Rwanda is doing that, we must do that. He that has lived, he, I'm not saying you, that has been the narrative. And clearly the government's communication itself, the Minister of Health, they always point out to Rwanda, because that is the only place, zip line, mm. have actually executed a project like that. Now for you to say that we've gotten value for money, I'm wondering with comparison, for you to say that we've gotten value for money, you should be able to compare how much we are paying for this service to other countries, certainly you cannot be talking about that. So for us to do that because one that did that for me is absolutely disastrous. There's another very important point that my friend failed to mention, is that look, how much we are spending in that? I had the narrative, oh, we are not spending any money. It's just like the, the, the Chinese bauxite thing. We are not spending any money, we are not paying. The president himself said, we are not paying, as if taking our mineral resources is not payment. And they quickly ran to say that, oh, it's butter, as if butter 
you are not paying because we are not paying in cash. So I'm, I'm saying that it's dangerous. Look, every single organization that has the expertise to work in health delivery in this country oppose this deal. Show me one apart from the Minister of Health and the Ghana Health Service. Of course, we had the Director General of the Ghana Health Service who behaved like a politician. He was running from one radio station and one TV station, defending the very thing he ought not be defending. When associations and organizations that indeed have the expertise to work in this have all opposed this particular deal. So for you to sit here and tell us that, oh, it's good. We don't have adequate blood in this country. That is a fact. Do you know that per the rules and regulations governing the conduct of medical or health workers, mm. it's not every health post that can deliver blood. There are some designated health posts. Why are you bringing in drones? Why is it that UK, Europe, and America, they don't engage in that? Because they have adequate, efficient, and effective medical services. The infrastructure but is we don't there. Have. Good. So what we need needed to do, even if we do not have enough, the infrastructure is not there. The money that we will be spending in this, can that augment so that we don't have some of these problems? You, you use drones when you places that are not more trouble. You can access those places. All the places he quickly made mention of, he referred to assuming that there is a snake bite, you know, with someone somewhere in the north. Mm. Presumably, that it is difficult to access those areas. This your testing and this testing has not even involved any part of the place that you quickly made mention of. It, it doesn't, please, please, it doesn't. The you beginning mean, of it, you I'm mean saying, the test runs. even even when they start, is not going to cover the entire nation. Yes, now, yes, so yes. I'm saying that the places that you are sending them, they are more trouble. They don't have am, place, please. I'm saying that they don't place. have ambulances. There are roads to those areas. They don't have ambulances. Now, when you send a blood there, there is something you need to do a test. Even when you send a blood, blood is sent to be infused in anybody. You need to do another test to be able to ascertain. Assuming a wrong blood is sent somewhere. Can the wrong blood be used on somebody wrongly? And two, oh, but, the, but I'm things, saying the, that the, the Ghana the, Health can, Service, can, can, and permit can me, the may, 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 may the facilities are the ones who will have been oh, can, I, can, I, can I finish? Uh, let, if let, me just read, let me just read the position. Yeah, uh, yes. Let me just you read the opposition read. of an expert. Mm. Those who are clothed with the capacity, the efficiency to talk about That what happens when wrong blood products are delivered by a drone to a wrong patient? Many standard operating pro, uh, you know, procedures require confirmatory tests. Now, even though you may request, you need to do a confirmatory test. Mm. Who does that? But now, the centers that are activated... The centers yes, don't have the capacity. Have capacity. No, no. no. Ah, who, who does the confirmatory test? Okay, so the confirmatory we, test is supposed to be done at, at the, the point center. of 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 Transfusion. usage. Yes. Transfusion. Okay. Right. I'm saying that the, how do you they don't have the capacity in those areas. Those that, centers they, that are hooked onto no, the system they don't listen, have the capacity. No, huh. you have yeah, the they, centers they, they, you, uh, you have the centers. You know that I'm saying that you have the centers mm. where these things are delivered. Mm. They are delivered to health posts. Mm. Okay, right. not hospitals. They have to cheap. No, but you are can, no. Can I no, say? No, Eric, 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 I listen to you. You can't argue. You, you see the difficulty. No, no, Eric, 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 please. And on truth. Please, and please stop it. Let's let let understand him. I'll come understand back to you. Eric, please, I'll come back to you to explain. Allow him to go on. You see the frustrations of this gentleman. Because I'm asking. Because they know a lot they're hiding. I'm asking. But you are explaining the thing properly. For instance, yesterday, I got the explanation. Eric, please allow me. I got the explanation that. Um. Some facilities have been hooked onto the system, so they have activated, meaning that these things that you're talking about, every facility or every center that, that is hooked has what it takes to run the service. Let me, that's, that's what maybe, I Maybe know. perhaps, you see, he understands, mm -hmm. but he doesn't even appreciate what I just said. Why? You have a health post, assuming you have a health post mm -hmm. in Nanton. Right. That request blood from the center he is talking about, the center that they claim that has all this expertise. Now the blood is sent there. A wrong blood is sent there. How do they infuse the wrong blood? Now, when blood are even sent for transfusion, that there is something they themselves said they do what do they call uh, what test? He, let me, it's a I, confirmatory it's test. It's a confirmatory they test. Need to confirm. So they can request that we need this blood for ABCD. Mm. While the blood, assuming that you want to have an infusion of blood at 37. Now, the, the person is B+. Plus. 
okay, mm. they bring it, they would have to also do a confirmatory test. If not, you risk infusing a wrong blood into a person. Yeah, now, yeah, this question, you, can, you I can I disagree? Can I finish? Uh, come this, this, let me question, come this issue was let not raised come. by me. Yes. It was let, raised, if you permit me, I'll just have to tell you the yes. organization, the Africa Center for Health Policy. Okay, let me come they in. They have raised this Come in, let me come in here. Come in, come in, let me, come in, let me come in here. Eric, allow me to hold this. Now, come in, is it that you don't believe that the health service is suggesting that these centers that are hooked onto the zip line project they have all the the essentials to deal with this I'm is not, it that you don't believe it I, i'm not even talking of what the centers have or what we do not have if you observe except that you are not listening to because they're not going to send the essential medicine no. to everywhere it was just the one, only centers I, that are activated right, right. the mm. issue i raised was just one of the numerous issues okay. and challenges that people have raised what well, i want i want to us to clear that system. the issue i have raised mm. is one of the numerous this is not my position mm. this is the position of an organization that has the expertise more than myself and he and the minister of health now he sits here and he says that they don't know what they are talking about they are the paragons of knowledge but i'm saying that I raised the issue. Why are we doing this? We are doing that because of what happened in Rwanda. No. Oh, that's please, how, please. Huh? I am okay. saying. Can no, I okay. Finish? okay, so that's right. one point. Right. One okay, thing, go on. Right. One thing I have yeah. observed is that mm. repeatedly, mm. repeatedly he tried to interject. Mm. Needless. You, you go and I really I'll, don't I'll, think I'll that get, it argues well I'll for this process. I listen to you. Go so on. let me. Why, what are you hiding that desperately you would want to prevent me from talking? I am saying that government communication, the Minister of Health, and all the, the Director General Ghana Health Service. They all pointed out to what happened in Rwanda. Mm. One of the reasons why we are engaging this company is because of the only work they have done in Rwanda than any other place in the world. You sit here and you pretend and you say that it is not about Rwanda. What are you talking about? Let, I'm saying that the only experience this company has is what they did in Rwanda. Let me put this question. I'm saying let's look at the geographical setting, the youth of Ghana mm. and Rwanda. We are not the same. Mm. I have indicated that Rwanda is mountainous. There are several places that are not accessible. It is not like that. All the med health institutions, associations, and bodies with the expertise more than myself and the government have all indicated that this is a useless expenditure. Now, you know what they do? They always rush into appealing to the emotions of people and say, oh, if there is a snake bite, even if one life. Now, if I can ask you another question, assuming losing 20 or 30 lives against one person's life, which one is more valuable? That you don't have even health workers manning those, those health posts. You don't have ambulances. In fact, you don't even have blood. You spend this amount of money in doing that. The moment you raise those legitimate questions, and he says that it's red herring, he says that they don't know what they are talking about. They are the okay. paragons of knowledge. Look, we were in this country when you went in for that useless Ghana GPS $2.5 million. What has happened to it? Okay, so I'm saying that we're raising legitimate questions, Let, and you ought to address them. Let Look, me get right, you to address the question. Whether we like it or not, money has been spent. Yes. There yes. is nothing we can do about it. Okay. But between that and providing the ambulances and indeed employing more health workers to man those health posts and other places, which one would have been better? Okay, I'm grateful. Eric, now come in. So he, he, he's raising issues, of course. He says that you need to compare what we have here to uh, Rwanda to be able to say that ours is better. Again, he says that, uh, well, in Rwanda, uh, there are more places you cannot access compared to Ghana. And then this issue you can explain because I have had the explanation that. These centers that are hooked onto the system are kind of, they have activated uh, uh, or they have linked their system to that of Zipline. So whatever it is that is needed to, to run this project, they have. You, you, can, you, you can explain these. Well, to start with, mm. I mean, like I said, I mean, I didn't mean... Uh, to be uh, to be rude to say that it's born out of ignorance. Oh, you said you let said. Me, let, me let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah, but I'm saying that. He, 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 no, he, no, he, no, he kept. He kept. He kept. He kept. Absolutely nothing to apologize. Oh, yes. But you see, But you see, I think that we have to try to appreciate what it is, and you understand the system perfectly. How? One, for any medicine or blood to be sent. It has to be activated by a facility that is already hooked on to that center. Mm. Can I ask you a question? Let me finish. No, no, Let no, me finish. Come in. Don't, yeah, please don't, don't, don't. Right. I so, expect you to do so, something to No, no. So, don't. Don't. Talking don't, uh, don't. So, no, I'm just saying that okay. I expect you to do No, something. don't. So, if 
I am in my house. Mm. I cannot activate for a drone to deliver something to my home. Because you won't have the you people, won't have the one, and you're not linked to, okay. to their system. It's mm. very simple. Mm. So for you to say that a facility will not have the capacity to do a confirmation test, mm. it's erroneous. It is not the case because that facility headed by either the health, uh, the, 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 the superintendent the or the, place, the, the nurse, nurse or, or the doctor there or whatever, <laughs> who has what it takes to administer the drug, the medicine or the blood that they are requested for, would be the one who would initiate the delivery of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, the medicine to them. Mm. So this whole idea that uh, it will go to a facility and there's, uh, there's no health personnel there to administer the, the medicine and all of those things. It is not the case. Again, this whole idea that uh, it's be as a result of it has happened in Rwanda and we want to copy Rwanda is the most pedestrian, so ridiculous where, where uh, 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 commentary that I've so heard. We're not told that, uh, that but if you make reference, if you make reference mm. to it, you can make reference to anything. We sit here and we say that we want to benchmark maybe our uh, regulatory agencies or the things that we do against the uh, what pertains elsewhere. That's not. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. But I'm saying that. You see, when he goes on and starts talking about ambulances and all that, I predicated my statement even on the the the, the drones on the fact that if people make legitimate raise legitimate concerns that okay, is this going to replace governments? Uh, intervention and investment in the health sector. I said, the government should do that. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But even when we talk about ambulances, this government would provide more ambulances in the have. next... Listen, the ambulances have been <laughs> procured <laughs> in June. All the ambulances will be in this country. At least every single district will have an ambulance. Okay. Right? Ask him, how many ambulances did they provide when they were in power in the, in the last so, eight so, years. So and they, even when they, got, they the, had an opportunity the point is that and they the had an inclination there, to do so, to what they brought need. something that was not fit for purpose. Eric, the, the point is that even though the drone is there, we're adding to what we need to improve the Exactly. Health. And that's just what I'm saying. I think that anybody, even the health minister in his speech, mm -hmm. said that this is not coming to replace anything. It's meant to be an add-on. It means to be an enhancement of the... The, the delivery system. Okay. And I'm saying that it's a last mile. It's something that is, even if, if you have a road network, mm -hmm. how long, for instance, even if you want to send a car between Accra and Tema, how long would that take vis-a-vis -vis that of a drone? And okay. especially if it's an emergency. So it's faster. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mothers uh, uh, in labor and all of those things. I mean, this thing is a time that's allowed the technology. Let's allow the process to start. And then we can monitor We can monitor it. Then, then it. And then, issue of that course. does not mean, and government is still committed to investing in the health delivery system. He the issue that does of not course. mean that it's going to take away any other thing that government is meant to do. It's okay. an add-on. It's an enhancement. Okay, then the issue of right, cost. Right. Can I, yeah, can but I, it's a, it, the quickly. issue of cost, mm. and I'm saying that, when the issue was sent to Parliament initially, mm. our friends on the other side raised a lot of concerns about, about, the cost. about the cost and everything. And I'm saying that. When you take the SLA, that the service delivery uh, the uh, agreement. Uh, agreement, right? It actually gives you five different scenarios. And he's a very smart guy. He knows what scenario planning is. So ours so is better out of, than Rwanda. That's yeah, that yes, yes. So it gives you, and even even no. the even <laughs> even the the equipment that we are using now is better. Is better than, than Rwanda. Rwanda. And this okay. is the state the the, the most advanced drone health, uh, medicine delivery system in the world today. Okay. Uh, Brad, you understand? Brad, I just want to deal I, with the I, issue I, to do with the cost. Uh -huh. When you take the SLA, mm -hmm. right, it gives you five different scenarios. Now, in the, all those scenarios, it tells you that, okay, you have to deliver 15, uh, uh, 15 medicines or blood a day in, in a month. Mm -hmm times the number of facilities that are going to be connected, Euros. which is about 80 or 120 or so, right? So it's as if that every single uh, facility is meant to request 15 times in a day, right? Times 30, you can do the calculation in a month mm. for 
the scenario five, which was which came up to the twelve million dollars or so that they were talking about. And I'm saying that it can happen that a facility will be there for a whole month without, a without even doing a request. Okay. So the issue so to do you with the cost say is that we say you burn pay out pay as you go. You pay if we don't request, we don't you pay. Don't pay. Okay, Brad, okay. Can, I, can I make this? Two point? minutes and then we can move Brad, on. Yes, two minutes. No, two no, minutes. two minutes, then we'll move on. You go. Why would you give me two minutes? Oh, you come in. Your two minutes is running. You go. No, I'm just asking a simple question. No, I, you, I, I, I prefer you, uh, to go. set that very clear, even if I don't talk. Why would you give me two minutes when you have given him more than come two in. minutes? Come uh, in. In the first place, uh -huh. he's talking futuristic. We are going to do this. Mm. That is baloney. That's but the ambulances have been procured. Could you tell him to be quiet? Eric, please allow him. Could you tell him to be quiet? Eric, please allow him to go on. use baloney on him. It's absolutely baloney. It's insulting to the sensibilities of the people of this country. That's the ambulances have been procured. Could you tell him? Come, uh, the ambulance have been procured. I mean, Eric, if you are using uh, words like uh, respect uh, the view public. Eric, you, respect Eric, you respect allow the him public. to, to make his point. You are talking about the fact that, that this government You've abandoned every single health infrastructure that the NDC started. That is not true. Even those we have finished, you are, you are incompetently refusing to commission them. You are saying it's not true. University of Ghana medical post is there. Regional used. hospitals, please, used, please. Right. Regional hospitals, cheap compounds. You have abandoned them. Yeah. So what is the guarantee Even that the, what you are doing? You have Eric, abandoned. Eric, you have abandoned that? existing health posts. Things that the NBC started. Mm. Feeder roads that the NBC engaged in and constructing to make it accessible to get to those places for which reason you wouldn't need an ambulance. You come here and then you tell us that you are going to continue. The other issue he talked about Rwanda. I am saying that this company that you have contracted. They haven't had any experience anywhere apart from Rwanda. Mm. So if you are denying that you are not using Rwanda as a reference point, for me that is extremely shocking. Another point he mentioned has to do with the fact that, that the, 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 the government of the NPP weighed into the cost, we are not paying anything, is pay as you go. The reason why we are raising this issue, and don't reduce it, and I realize that he succeeded in convincing you into reducing the debate oh, to the capacity so, of on. the centers. Come you on, need first on. and foremost come blood. On. We don't have blood. You need okay. money. No, That's your can argument. Can I finish? So, okay, I, no, I understand your argument too. No, can please, I, I'm saying Eric, that you need blood. That. We don't have blood. Mm -hmm. If you do not know, you need money. You need resources mm -hmm. to be able to have blood at the blood bank. We don't have that. Okay. Two, you need the expertise of people to man the blood. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, if they send blood anywhere, people must administer. They must administer the infusion. You don't have them. Okay. Now, the other argument I raised, which he tried to avoid, has to do with the fact that the reasons why you are bringing in drones is because of accessibility. It's because of certain facilities that are non-existent. Electricity, internet cap cap uh, you know, facilities, roads. I'm saying that all the places that you think that they have this expertise, they don't need drones. Let me give you an example. Take Savulgu Nantong Municipal Assembly. You have health center at Savulgu. Lies, internet, everything. Take all the communities that you have cheap compounds. First and foremost, legally, they don't have the capacity to administer blood. Mm -hmm. Now, why would you take a blood to, to from Tamale to those places when Savulga has already a storage facility? I am saying that it's absolutely needless spending. Mm -hmm. Now, if you weigh in the amount of money that we are spending, that money could have employed a lot of people. That money could have completed the, the work that you incompetently abandoned. Now, complete those ones. Complete the feeder rules. We don't need drones. Drones okay. themselves are not 100% perfect. You are you, asking about you, the ambulances your, the NDC provided. There are many. No, I, I'm not going even to. Even if that's will put, you put your argument the fact that them. we don't even have the blood to try? We don't even have it. That is we don't argument. have the manpower. Okay. The people who do them are not there. Doctors have finished. They can't even be posted because government doesn't have money. Yet government can get money to pay people to give us drones that we so do not need if we provide some of these facilities I'm that are permanent. I need to move. Right. Uh, I, I need to move. Right. Right. Just a quick point. Okay. I, I think that still, Mutala is either is being deliberately mischievous, or is purely ignorant about what this thing is meant to do. Mm. And I'm saying it once again. No facility would be able to activate the delivery of any medicine we are or not talking blood. about the facilities that deliver. It, it, no, it, I'm talking it, about it, the it, ones it, that. The argument please, is please, no. I'm not but there. the places Please. will the, not get not, an opportunity to get it see, right. if they are not put person, onto the system. Right, an intelligent okay. person so, who doesn't even so, appreciate no, no, right. an intelligent okay. person who doesn't But he doesn't understand the, the places that you think that they need them, I'm saying that those places 
those places don't need drones. I'm I have given you an example. No, of okay, because you are, you are, you are, you are, you are okay. ignorant okay. of the issues. I, I, I am grateful. Can we move on? Okay. Let's move on. Let's talk about the Tadi girls. I want us to stay with the Galamse issue. But let's talk about the Tadi girls before we deal with the Galamse issue. The only guy says that there's confusion. Yes, we'll talk about it. There's confusion over missing Takwadi girls. Are we? Uh, I'm we, not no, 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 I'm just saying we'll, we'll, there are trending issues it. and we can we'll, we'll talk, talk about it. Is there anything we, more trending than what is the there, minister uh, Can we go on? Yeah. Can we go on? Is there really confusion over what is happening, the Takrati girls? Uh, Eric, is there confusion? Well, I mean, um, to start with, any parent, I'm a parent, so, I mean, my uh, sentiments would always lie with the, the parents and the family and friends of the young girls that have been kidnapped oh. or abducted, if you want. And so uh, this is an extremely difficult and uh, sensitive issue to, to discuss. I believe strongly, and that, this is my personal view, that there's a certain lack in terms of the communication of mm -hmm. this whole thing, uh, that there's no ambiguity in terms of what the police had communicated earlier. Um, I, and I'm sure many Ghanaians were of the impression that the finding of the girls, or I mean, bringing the girls back to the family was imminent. Uh, it turns out that uh, we haven't been able to do so. Uh, and what was unfortunate was um, the fact that over the last couple of days, there was also some uh, reportage that the girls have been found, and I'm sure it would heighten the uh, anxiety of the families, and it turned out that uh, that wasn't the case. The police had come to try and clarify the matter. I hope and pray that the girls are safe and that uh, based on what the police are saying, that they are still obviously to bring these girls back to their families is the case. Uh, so for me, I think that for, for the media and even other citizens, it's important mm -hmm. that we are quite uh, circumspect in terms of how we comment on this matter. Especially if they have been kidnapped, they, the people who have, uh, the, the culprits, hmm. would also be uh, apprised with what is going on in the media, in the news, and all of those. And, and I think that is a position that was taken by the police initially. Uh, but it's, it's difficult to understand how uh, one minute the girls were coming, and then the next minute um, hmm. we don't seem to uh, get to the bottom of it. So for me, okay. it's, as so a it's parent, a communication problem. Yeah, as a as a parent, I feel that, uh, and we were talking about that even in the background, that the anxiety and the sort of uh, pain that you'd go through, knowing that uh, you don't know exactly where your your child, one of your children, is, and even the closure of it in terms of what have, might have happened to them, if they have eaten, where are they sleeping. Uh, and all of those. And so for me, I hope and pray that we're able to find them, uh, mm. that the police are okay. acting assiduously and professionally to be able to bring that. But I got the indication as well that they are working with other agents, including some foreign agencies, to bring on, some on, kind on this of finality matter. to the market. Okay. Comment, a, a bite of that. Is right, it a communication problem? Not a bite, a comment on that. When you okay, tell me a, bite, a, a comment exactly. on that. You're very yes, yes, abrasive. Yes, I this no, way. Go ahead. You're always abrasive. Right. This is unusually me, abrasive. Right has given me the room to think that way. Right. I think that this thing You become says, MPP today. Right. That's ah, good. You see, because you've always I'm been MPP. Oh, really? Can't even decipher. I haven't even accused you of being a one. Oh, but I mean, come on. You can imply it. It's okay. It's okay. Let's move on. Because of that. Right, right. I think that this deserves address of the state, mm. not the useless Ghana-US military arrangement that we did with the president used the opportunity to insult everybody. Oh, you have three, kind of, please, you have you three young about? girls of no, our state, no. three young girls of our state who are gone missing. The families, the organizing situation, and by the way, I was on a program with one of their communicators who indicated that, oh, three months was too short a time for the family to be worried. I'm oh, a parent. You want me to mention the name of the come person on, on but the But is it the person? Don't it's not fair. Don't push me, please. It's unfair. I haven't mentioned the person, but if you, you, you want you, me, you, you don't need to mention the person. So, 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 so it's, it's your need. own baby. When we have Let's people communicating for government because of his admonition that we need to be circumspect, 
I think that look over. But the person shoulder. is not here. Please, I say look over your shoulders and give that advice. Oh, so you think that I watch every single <laughs> program that applicators go to? Please allow him. I want us to do with Sakalani and then the In this country, I can imagine and I can feel the agony that the family will be going through. Get home and you don't find your daughter or your son just a day. And you can imagine how it feels. These young girls are gone missing. The police never even had much interaction with the family, by their own accounts. You have a minister for gender who traveled to share crocodile tears. That's what you think. He, she went, met the families, and told them that they would get their, their, their kids very soon. Who forced her to do that? Nobody forced her. Three, getting, three months getting to four months. Nobody hears anything about it. On what basis did the Minister of State make those promises? On what basis? Now you have a CID boss who is not fit to be there. I said it on this program that that woman was not fit to be the CID. People thought I hated the woman. Why? This is a woman who was caught on tape covering up crime. A deputy CID boss. The CID themselves said that it was doctored. Now, if you doctor anybody's voice, it's crime. And the laws of this country. Now, let's alone a deputy CID boss. By one of the members of NPPA plus, she dared the woman and dared the police that if you, you think I've doctored the voice, please, please, you don't <laughs> determine to me how I make my point. You, so, you see, you she dared everybody that if you think I have doctored the tip, arrest me. The police themselves informed us that they had commenced investigation into the matter. Now, the investigation was going to give us two and only two outcomes. One, to establish that her voice was indeed doctored. By the way, she never denied it wasn't her voice. Now, if you establish that your voice was doctored, for which reason A plus will not be a free man? The second one was going to establish that the voice was not doctored. It was indeed her voice, in absolute. And for which reason she was not going to be fit to even be a CID, let alone the deputy. Mr. Appointment and clearance came from nowhere. The president president indeed upgraded, promoted her to the CID boss to investigate who. Now today, such a woman will hold a press conference. He, he has lived in Europe before. Held a press conference. Nobody forced the police to hold the press conference. Held a press conference and said that we know where the girls are. You will get your kids very soon. How many months? Is it not more than a month now? No, it's just about 23 days. Even the very day, 23, almost a month. Even the very day that announcement was made. Joy FM interviewed one of the sisters of the young ladies. And she said that the police CID boss herself contacted the family yesterday. She told us nothing. Nothing about this. Now you sit here and you think that this is not a symptom of chaos and anarchy. Look, it is not for nothing that the police themselves in their 2018 report indicated that first quarter of 2018 registered the highest armed robbery ever in the history of this country. It's a symptom of decay in our security in this country. And everybody is now working on hooks. So I am saying that it is the responsibility, if there is any group of persons who should be admonished to be circumspect and responsible in their communication, is the government and the appointees of government. Now you have a CID. The CID boss should tell us the reasons why she made that pronouncement? Was it that it was done to please the political apparatchiks of this country? I am saying that this is a serious case. Look, every single individual must be concerned. Every single individual must take this. And I expect the president mm. to take this thing very serious. Because you see, if nothing is done to this, unfortunately, we may experience such. And that, for me, is dangerous. Okay, Comrade, I'm grateful. Let's touch on this one before we go. The uh, works minister is suggesting that the Saglami housing project has not been abandoned. According to him, uh, he has a number of challenges which bordered on law, criminality, and in some instance, uh, measurements in relation to cost, for which reason it had been referred to the Attorney General. To this end, he said that a decision would be taken on whether to go ahead and abrogate the contract and re-award uh, it for completion. Uh, he mentions, for instance, uh, uh, the challenges border, border on law. Some have got to do with criminality, and you needed to live it with the AG. And what is even serious is some of them have issues with measurement in relation to cost. So uh, that's the story with the housing project. Eric, housing, a uh, key thing that uh, is, uh, uh, needs attention. But these are units sitting there. 
has it been abandoned? The minister says no, <coughs> just that we need to work on it. It hasn't been abandoned. Mm. And um, again, my position on these things are always the same. Um, I feel that, of course, uh, it's the one of the responsibilities of government to uh, support citizens to be able to live in uh, in, in, in accommodations that are fit for, uh, for purpose, and especially when it comes to affordable housing. We already know that we have a deficit in that sector. But if you go through the issues surrounding Saglimi, mm -hmm. right, it's symptomatic of the kind of governance that the NDC uh, gave to us. You know, and I was surprised. I mean, and uh, it's a bit early, but I call that. Uh, so they titillate themselves, and then they it makes it feel that they are being uh, they, they, are, they are governing or they're doing something so significant. And so sometimes they even go out there and say that, well, uh, since uh, President Nkrumah, their government has had the most investment in infrastructure and all of those things. And then you go into the Saglemi issue, where an agreement was sent to Parliament for 5,000 units. And he was in Parliament at the time, so I'm going to hold him personally responsible <coughs> as well. And then the minister responsible actually changes the agreement, or basically deviates from what it was sent to parliament, was approved by parliament, and reduces it to 1,502 units, maintaining the same $200 million cost. Mm. Then moves further to sign <coughs> another agreement to change it down further to 1,300 and so, and then still maintaining the same 200 and uh, 200 million. 200 million uh, dollars. Dollars. Then it turns out that out of that, 95% of the monies had actually been advanced <coughs> to the contractor. The contractor builds 600. Out of the 600, only 200 apparently are actually fit for some kind of uh, habitation. Mm -hmm. Even that, the attendant uh, facilities are meant to uh, be attached to it which is the, the drainage system, the sewage system, and all of those things, had not been done. And hasn't, hasn't been done. But they've gone ahead and paid 95% to the contractor. Um, apart from that, the contractor had uh, opportunities for tax waivers and all of those things. So you'd, you'd ask yourself, uh, where have we, what, 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 what did we do to deserve that kind of governance? To deserve that kind of, what's it? It means, I mean, I'm actually short for words, 138 million dollars, right, has actually been lost. If that is the the case. Okay, the, 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 the 129 case. million. Yes, 129 dollars. million. Mm. Right? 10 million has been lost. Yeah, has been, <laughs> has been, has been lost, <laughs> right? And we need to ask, get answers from the NDC government at the time. How come 5,000 units turn into 600 and turn into 200? Basically, and how come that 95% of the monies were advanced to this contractor to build 5,000 units of housing for people, essential services, the security service agencies, nurses, doctors, uh, policemen, and army people mm. to occupy, and the monies are nowhere to be found, the units are nowhere to be found. Now, even in the current state, it means that there has to be an additional investment to make it habitable for everybody. It's a most despicable display of uh, stewardship that I've ever seen. I mean, I mean, I've seen so many different things that has happened under their watch. But this is this is crazy. And but, but apart you from said, that, you said, you, you, from you said that, you've not apart you're from, yet to hear ap from. Apart from the, that, you said the NDC you see, apart from that, you see, hmm. I remember that a, a couple of months ago there was hmm. some video going around coming from their stables trying to purport in that, well, they've done this project and government has abandoned it and everything. And sitting back, I realized that it was actually like a first strike. You understand? They, they, are, they, are, not, they are not dumb. They are, it was a smart move trying to actually uh, 
channel the public displeasure towards government rather than themselves. But if you look at the state of this particular mm. uh, housing project and where we are today in terms of money that have already been spent, where are the 5,000 units? How come that a minister Eric, let on me, his own let, accord... Let me cut in and ask you before I go to yes, comment. On his own if, accord, if we'll be able per, to... Per the works yes, minister, yes. he's sure that uh, Mr. Uh, Collins' dad has misappropriated 129 million because he said that from 5,000, it was reduced mm. to 1,024 units. So instead of $60 million, the cost was $200 million. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you, what do you think? Should government go ahead, uh, retrieve the money, and put the project to you so that we can quickly go and live in there? Or perhaps it is taking too long. Government, to deal government with. like from the minister, government is committed to having that done mm. uh, because it has some contractual implications. Right. Uh, the uh, AG was um, asked to prefer uh, an opinion and think that the decision has already been made that government will go ahead and invest to make sure that's habitable. But that shouldn't stop there. And I entreat that we should go after. One, the, the contractor to find out exactly mm -hmm. why they were paid 95% of the monies for a 5,000 housing project, which is meant to be affordable anyway. Now, even if you do the maths, what it means is that for what they have built, a unit is going to cost about $133,000. How can that be an affordable housing project to start with? So for me, it's, it's, it's symptomatic. It's a classic uh, create loot and share scenario <laughs> that we have seen here. Okay. And L let me. I believe strongly that the the perpetrators should be brought to book. Okay. Let me put this question to comment. Comment. So it, it started from five thousand. The minister said it was uh, uh, varied to one thousand and twenty-four, and so he's saying that it should have cost sixty million dollars instead of two hundred. So he says that uh, the minister. Uh, misappropriated $129 million of the right. funds for that. I, I thought we have had enough of the recklessness and irresponsibility in terms of communicating from this government. I didn't know that we still have a lot more to. If you think that someone has squandered money, you are clothed with the legal and authoritative power to prosecute and jail the person. In this country, the Cocoa Board held a press conference when this he's super not going to answer, he's, he's not going to answer this you, question. Uh, Eric, I thought he was going to use uh, the same uh, principle uh, of right. the drone right. to, right. to answer right. this. He's right. not going to do that. Please allow him. Right. He's Why? not going to do that. He's 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 not going to do that. I knew it. I knew it. He's not going to do it. Coco Board, they held a press conference and said that Mr. Opuni had squandered $400 million, Dr. Opuni held the press conference by this super incompetent and super corrupt chief executive, addressed the press conference. They went to court to prosecute openly. $400 million is found nowhere in the rate of prosecution. Now you have the same government that claimed that the NDC had squandered a lot of money with Ameri, you remember? They came to power, they went to Dubai, they came back, and they were trying to impose on the Ghanaian people more than what the NDC had done, which they claimed that we had inflated. You see? This is the strategy that make the allegation wild without even listening to. I mean, for me, and I'm not surprised about the recklessness of the Minister for Water Resources, and I'm not surprised. Now, if you think that Colin Dowda has squandered that much money, go ahead and prosecute him. You see, it reminds me of what Mr. Akoto Ampao, in fact, a lawyer to the president, said when they were demanding that the Minister for Justice and Attorney General be removed, he said, that when you sit and make allegations that be bar allegations and expect government to prosecute on bar allegations, it's a problem. Because when you go to bar and got drunk and you come out with all manner of allegations, government can't go to court with that. The reason why a lot of these allegations they have thrown out there, that they haven't been able to provide a scintilla of evidence for which reason it can be meritorious in a competent, of, of competent court of jurisdiction is that they knew in the house of their house that they are lying, that this gentleman has squandered that hundreds of millions of dollars. If you think that you so love Ghana so much, why not go ahead and prosecute him? Tell me one single institution that they haven't raised those allegations. But it is not surprising. The president himself, 
announced that they had detected thousands of ghost names on the control and accountant general P rule and blamed the NDC. It took the Minister of Finance to apologize to the Ghanaian people. The president himself. You have the vice president who had indicated that we never had any projects. Now they said that the NDC never, all the things we were doing were Photoshop. When we provided them with evidences, of all the projects we executed, they began asking questions about value for money and saying that we had inflated the prices. And we challenged them, provide the evidence. Now today, the very projects that we executed, you can't even incompetently commission them. So I'm saying that what responsible appointees and governments do, when you are given the mandate to govern as a minister for water resources and, and housing, mm. and you think that Mr. Collins Dowda had squandered that money, you have a responsibility. Now, for you to come out crying for Ghana, it demonstrate how you have lost it. To be very honest, oh, this government so is a joke of a government. Please, yeah, listen, it's a listen, joke listen. of a government okay. because, listen, 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 I have given okay. you the reason use, why, Brad. You can use the reason why, Brad. Brad, the reason why, Brad, the reason why, is made. Brad, the reason why he was preventing me from was making that, reference to Cocoa Ball. No. Has to, I wanted to give no. you a litany listen, of such allegations listen, being made. Now, it is one thing coming out to make allegations. Brad, I have no answer to this question except that those who are giving them. Eric, Eric, should the minister go after Mr. Collins down. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But okay, the point so, is that so let's Mr. Has I'm married you guys has no false no, 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 He says the minister should go after Mr. Collins down. Yes, like yes, that's should, wrong. But I'm saying, so but instead of telling tell us the public, but the point go after him. Where are the 5,000 so, so, you see, so, you see, let me answer him. Why, let me why answer is him. it two hundred million dollars? You see, right. Why is Mr. Collins not answering? Right. Where is the four hundred million dollars, million dollars Dr. Punis? No, but you see, okay. where is the four hundred million dollars? Where is that money? I'm with you. No principle principal whatsoever. You guys, you have to go round and round in circles and then cast aspersions against the president himself. The president himself. I'm grateful. So if the the chief counsel would give you a haircut, what do you expect? I am grateful, gentlemen. I am grateful, gentlemen. I have a good Thursday morning. Comrade Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed is the aspiring MP for uh, Tamale Central, a member of the NDC. Eric Tum is a member of the MPP's team. Grateful for your time with us. Stay here.